What's up, everybody? PCM here, back with another video. And today, we're going to be talking about why you should not be an ethical hacker. And I know that's weird coming from a channel whose videos are primarily on ethical hacking, but I see a lot of people trying to get into this field for all the wrong reasons. And I'm going to talk today about the reasons why you should not become an ethical hacker. So stay tuned. We're going to do a quick ad, and then we're going to jump right into it. Today's ad is brought to you by TCM Security Academy. So if you are still interested in ethical hacking by the time we are done with this video, I highly recommend you check out TCM Security Academy. We have courses, including foundational courses to get you prepared for ethical hacking. We've got courses on Linux and Python. We've got awesome courses. Of course, we've got the practical ethical hacking course. We've got privilege escalation courses. We've got OSINT courses. We've got courses on malware and mobile hacking and we've got our newest edition that just came out yesterday our practical web application security and testing a lot of you have been asking for a web app pen testing course and this is a fantastic web app pen testing course we're getting rave reviews already so if you haven't already please do consider checking out the academy consider checking out this course or any of our other great courses and i'll leave a link to the academy in the description below if you'd like to check it out thank you Okay, so there's no set order for these, and these kind of all go together in one way or another. So we're going to jump into them, and I'm just going to kind of list them out as they go. But first and foremost, this is not the right field for you if you're in it for the money. Now, this field is great. It does pay well. I think my starting salary when I first got into the field was $102,000 a year. It quickly jumped up to $140,000 a year. And I know plenty of pen testers making $160,000, $200,000 a year plus in this field. And that's great. And I think a lot of people get drawn into it and attracted to it, especially on the bug bounty side of things as well, where there's a lot of money potentially to be made. However, this still has to be a field that you're interested in. It is one of those fields that if you're not constantly staying up on top of your game, you're going to get quickly left behind. Which leads me into another point is this field is not for you if you are somebody who is easily complacent or even better, this field is not for you if you are somebody that does not like to study. Now, this field is considered a upper echelon of the IT field. It's not entry level. It's one of those things that you have to work towards and become more advanced before you can get into pen testing or ethical hacking. And there's a lot to learn along the way. Now, I have seen people get complacent in the sense that they really find that they like ethical hacking and they get there and then they get their first job and they think that they can coast and you can't coast in cybersecurity. Uh, this is one of those fields where things are always changing. An attack that works today might not work tomorrow or there could be a new attack that's out tomorrow that we don't know about, a new zero day drop. So, uh, you have to always be on your game and ready to go. We just had a zero day drop this week uh, with Microsoft Office. So it's one of those things that if you're not staying on top of these things, then not only are you doing yourself a disservice, but you're doing your clients a disservice when you go and do a pen test and say, well, I didn't find anything. Well, is it because you weren't up to date or is it because they were really well patched? <laughs> one of those can lead to a really, really bad event happening. Okay. So if you are complacent, if you think that you can just kind of coast through it once you make it to the field, you are incorrect. There is no room for complacency. If you do not like to study, there is no room for you because you always have to be studying. You always have to stay on top of things in this field. Now, this isn't like uh, like working help desk where a lot of the solutions stay the same year over year. Uh, we do have some attacks that stay the same in, in the pen testing or ethical hacking field, but uh, we're always seeing new things come out and new defenses that prevented the attacks that we used to do. So we always have to stay on top of things. So this kind of ties in with another point, which is that you are not passionate about the field. It's okay to like the ethical hacking mindset and to do hack the box or try hack me and have some fun, maybe even do CTFs and just enjoy it as a hobby. But when you get into the field and you're not passionate about it completely, then this field is not going to be for you for all the reasons already listed that you have to stay on top of things you have to study if you're not passionate about this you're going to find it very difficult to stay on top of things for me when i get into work and i've got a pen test that is i'm absolutely happy i'm thrilled 
I get to go and do something that I am super passionate about. I can sit down at my desk, work a pen test for 12 hours, and it feels like an only an hour has gone by. So that's the kind of passion that you need to bring to this. And for me, I'll give you a great example, not related to ethical hacking, but many of you know, I used to be an accountant. If this is your first time watching my channel, welcome. I used to be an accountant. I chose accounting because it was safe. I chose accounting because it was one of those fields where I knew I could make a lot of money. I grew up really poor. I said, this is going to change my life. And then I got into accounting and realized how awful it truly was, at least for me. I didn't like it. I thought it was terrible. I dreaded going into work every day. And every minute I was at work felt like an hour. And you need to make sure because for me, I was chasing the money, went into a field, chose a degree, went four years to college for this, only to realize when I got there that I hated every second of it and I didn't want to be an accountant anymore. So make sure that you understand that you're getting into this for the right reasons. If you're choosing it for the money and not for the passion, that's the wrong reason. If you're choosing it again because you think it sounds cool, but you don't think you're going to be able to uh, study all the time, or you don't like studying, or you're the complacent type, this might not be the field for you. Leave it as a hobby. Chase bug bounties on the side. Do some extracurriculars. But coming into this field and working full time is a whole different story. I like math. I like doing accounting. I like running books for the company that I do, but I would not want to be an accountant full time. Uh, there's a, a significant difference between doing it part time or partially for one organization than doing it for a bunch. And it's the same thing for pen tests. It can easily wear you out if you're not used to that lifestyle. One other thing to talk about that doesn't get talked about enough is writing reports as well. So you kind of have to be a three headed beast. I don't know how a good way to describe it, but you, you have to be somebody that can write technically and perform technically who can write uh, at a high level and communicate at a high level. You have to be a technical person, a person who can write, and somebody that can communicate um, is kind of the three-headed beast. And you have to be able to do that on both technical and non-technical levels because a lot of times you're going to present your findings to people who are non-technical. Yes, you're going to give a technical report summary to the group that has hired you, but there might be uh, a CEO who doesn't have a technical background or somebody in the meeting that it's important that they see these results and make decisions on these results but are not the technical people who are going to be fixing your results. So you have to be sure that you are somebody that can uh, take a technical finding and translate it over as well. So if you're not good with report writing, this might not be the field for you. And if you're not good with communication, that's something that you need to work on, or this might not be the field for you. And I can give you a great example is back when I was first starting out working in the field, working as a consultant, uh, there's oftentimes this newer guy that we worked with that would struggle to communicate in debriefs to clients uh, to the point where he would just read a finding off the sheet of paper and just read it at a technical level and could not get the information over to the non-technical people that were there. And there were many times where I was sitting there that I had to kind of step in and translate and say, here's what this means to you at a high level, even though the, the CEO or the person that was in there asking was saying, I don't understand. I don't get this. Please help. And this wasn't a one-time thing. This happened a lot. So this person really struggled with communication skills, even though that they could write the report successfully, they were still struggling to communicate that at a high level to the people in the room. So they ended up going working um, at an internal place where they're working for uh, just one company. And I think it's a little bit easier for their skill set. But if you're trying to get into uh, consulting and you're working in the field where you're doing pen tests for a bunch of different companies, the ability to communicate is key. The ability to write reports is key. And if you do not like writing and you do not like communicating, um, this might not be the field for you. And caveat that as well, this doesn't mean that you have to be extroverted. I am introverted incredibly, but you still have to be able to flip that switch and turn on the extrovert when you're doing a debrief or when you're talking to a client, you still have to be able to communicate effectively. So recapping all of this, if you are somebody chasing this for the money, not truly 100% passionate about the field, you don't like to study, you find yourself being complacent, you find yourself saying, hey, I made it, I'm checking out, or you don't like reporting, you're not good at communicating. Uh, this is probably not the field for you. You have to excel in a lot of different areas. And this is why I kind of like, this is one of those fields that's paid so well is because I don't wanna say they're looking for unicorns, but there's not a lot of people to fill the shoes of the positions that people are looking for. 
Um, and there's a lot of debates back and forth on, well, uh, the, the, the hiring standards are too high for me to get in. And yes, that's true for some jobs, but there's also a lot of applicants that just don't meet the qualifications um, because of these reasons or because they're not prepared enough yet. So as somebody who works in the field, I hope that each and every one of you are not the person that I described. But I, I think that it's also important to self-reflect and make sure that this is a field that works for you. And as one more story before I leave, um, the thing that made me think about this was I was in a meeting with somebody and he said, hey, I watched one of your ethical hacking courses. I bought your practical ethical hacking course and he was in cybersecurity. And he told me, he's like, I appreciate that course so much because it made me decide that I did not want to be an ethical hacker. And at first, like, I was offended by that because I said, wow, I must have been such a bad teacher that I made this person run away from ethical hacking. And I think he kind of picked up on that and caught on. He said, no, no, it's not your teaching skills. It was that you taught so well that I realized this field was not for me. And I thought that was really interesting. I've never heard that before. But he realized that the type of work that he was going to be doing in the ethical hacking field was better suited as a hobby for him and doing hack the box or try hack me or CTFs more so than doing it full time. He decided to go work on the blue side of cybersecurity or the defense side of cybersecurity because he found that his passions lined up more with that. And he thought that he would be better suited over there. And that's something that takes some deep diving and some self-reflection to make sure that you're doing this because as somebody who has chosen a career field for money, uh, it's not something that is exciting or enjoyable. And you really want to feel excited to go to work and you really want to be passionate about what you do when you do end up at work. So if this field is something that doesn't truly ignite that fire in you, you should consider maybe looking at other options. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you found it enjoyable. Uh, if you do like the video, please do hit the like button, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. You know the drill by now. I would be curious to hear your thoughts. What are some other reasons people might not want to be in this field in cybersecurity or in ethical hacking, I should say? And what are some reasons that maybe I missed or some other ideas that you might have as well? Comment down below, let me know. Until next time, my name is a Cyber Mentor and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.